Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another review and today I'm taking a look at the Chogokin RX-93FF New Gundam as in the life-size New Gundam statue from Fukuoka, Japan. Now this is a Japanese exclusive, I do think it was available on some premium Bandai's too, but if you're like me and have no other access to it, I got mine through Bai. you can too and I'll throw that link down there in the description. Now let's check it out. So now jumping into the aesthetics with the full 360 degree spin and the first thing I noticed with this is design wise when it comes to the new Gundam this isn't the classic standard big old chiseled features badass new Gundam we would have seen in the movies and I'm not even talking about the color scheme or anything that makes this the Fukuoka version I mean this literally looks like they took the digital data that they made the real grade new Gundam with and kind of just made it into a figure it's got the circular small cute head and a lot of the armor separation and the redesign to the way this looks, looks like it is heavily based on the real grade. This right here is of course what it looks like once it comes out of the box. This is a figure, it's heavy, a lot of die cast parts as you can see in the joints. We've got a whole bunch of colors on here and one thing I didn't expect this to be is pearlescent. The whole thing is finished off with a pearlescent top coat by the looks of things. This might be to your liking or not. Personally, I like mine finished looking like, well, flat or shiny, pearlescent isn't necessarily right up my alley. We do have a whole load of decals all over it and the detail is incredible, but on closer inspection, may not be as awesome as you'd want a premium figure to be. But we'll look at that in a second. First off, into the size comparison, and this right here is not to scale with anything. So just like we'd see with a metal build or something similar, this has no scale to it. If you throw it down beside the Master Grade RX-78 II and the Master Grade version of the new Gundam, you can see it isn't really, well, it's right between the two sizes. So that does mean this is not to scale, but it is almost in the region of Master Grade. So jumping in a little bit closer to check out all of the details on here, and this is my first ever time taking a look at a Chogo Keen figure, and I have to say, I did expect much better. There is a whole load of detail on this, but I feel like it's a bit of quantity over quality. For the most part, we've got lots of nice detailing, the general look of the greebles, layering, actual molded detail all over the surface, this seems identical to the real grade. But that is just in its design, it doesn't have the same level of different parts built up on each other. The parts that stand out the most to me definitely are the decals, they're very sharp, they look great and they're all over the place, placed perfectly and nothing is out of line whatsoever. However, when it does come to the actual paintwork on this and the actual molding of the plastic, this isn't the quality I expected from something that retails around the 250 euro or 250 dollar mark, if not 277 if I'm not mistaken. A lot of the paint, especially the kind of metallic paint for the lights, does look very blotchy. It's just kind of squir well, squirted, splotted, splashed in there without any kind of real sharpness to the edges of the lines and this goes for a lot of the paint. It just looks a little bit heavy-handed. I'm not sure if just the molding on the actual plastic is quite shallow, which gives it a little bit of a blurry non-sharp look, especially compared to something like Gunpla or some other high-end metal figures out there, or if it's the actual paint is just layered on too thick. Either way, it does look good from a distance, but it doesn't read that well up close. And what really kills me, and it might kill you too if you got this on a figure this expensive, there's actually a fuck up on the face. So as you can see there in those three lines or vents in the muzzle, the bottom one there has a little bit of bleed of the black. That, that is killer. However, on the whole, it does look extremely, extremely nice. It feels really nice in the hand too. It's nice and weighty. However, it just doesn't seem the quality that you'd be expecting at this price point. Anyway, it's not just the robot in here. We've got accessories too. Let's check them out. So now jumping into the accessories and here's absolutely everything that comes inside of the box which is a ridiculous amount of stuff so I'm not going to lay it all out one by one. We'll mention you cannot see it right here so I'll show you right now there are some alternate hands in here underneath the stand. And speaking of the stand, first off in here is the stand. This is two parts, just connects together simply. The stand right here is all the usual goings on, that's a clip here that allows you to slide it up and down here, changing the angle. This one right here allows the arm to extend. And this push button right here allows you to change the angle up top. Now, a couple of things I will mention about this is, 
It's pretty plain and glossy, which means it is an absolute fingerprint magnet. Through the top of this, you can actually kind of see the diamond pattern of how it's reinforced below, which again is in the most premium looking aspect I've ever seen on something like this. And it's labeled here, which is a little bit simple compared to something you'd see with Metal Build or Metal Robot Damashi by the same company. To attach the new gun, we just have to put an adapter onto the stand like so, pop on the new. This hold perfectly does exactly what it needs to do. This new is not going to fall off, but I will mention this does restrict the articulation a little bit. You kind of bring the legs in together because of that adapter. So when it comes to the hands we have in here, we've got a pair of fists. The sculpt on these are nice. The inside is oddly filled in, which is kind of a flat area though. We've got some widespread hands too. These aren't dynamic, they're more of a relaxed open palmed hand which match with the statue like aesthetic or the statue type vibe we have going with this figure and as for the other two pairs of hands we have in here these are for holding the included weapons so that is beam saber style or melee style holding hands and trigger finger style holding hands swapping these out is super simple they just pop off like so the attachment is a ball joint and reattaching them is no issue whatsoever and they hold on tight so next up in here, we do have a backpack, but before I look at that, I will mention this is a figure that does come with included batteries and some LEDs, which is always cool. I don't think, well, included batteries is rare. You just pull this tab right here in the back. So in order to turn on the LEDs, we do have a switch hidden behind a little bit of a compartment here in the back. Just pull that off, move the switch to the right, and they turn on. So getting the lights off so we can see just how good or bad these LEDs are, they're a little bit on the, well, anemic side. The one in the chest is quite bright, but the head camera and the eyes isn't the greatest, especially the eyes. I'm actually shocked that there's so much light bleed from underneath, and these are very, very, very weak. Once again, this is my first time turning them on. Those batteries are new, so I guess this is the effect of lighting painted eyes from behind. Anyway, as for attaching the backpack, just pops onto those two tabs, just like so. And just like the figure itself, this does have some nice metallic die-cast joints for attaching on the big cannon we'll take a look at in a little bit. So now moving on to the weapons, and the melee weapons we have in here are a pair of beam sabers. And in typical new Gundam fashion, these are asymmetrical. We've got the main big old one with two beams, and we've got the smaller supplementary one which looks like your standard beam saber. Attaching these is super simple, you just pop these into the holding hands, they slide in perfectly, hold on perfectly, and this is what it looks like in a pose. These catch the light very, very nicely, and they're a solid pair of beam sabers. Looking good. So when it comes to the storage of the beam sabers when they're not in use, this is actually quite interesting. I've never seen this before. And that is, you don't actually use the handles that you're using as the weapons right here, the ones that have the beams in them. Usually with a Gundam figure or kit, you just pop off the beams and throw the actual handles into the storage positions. But in here, we actually have storage-specific handles included. So to store them, the one in the forearm is very, very nice. We've got a sliding mechanism in the blue section. You push in this top part, and that opens up the area which you attach the handle into. You do everything in reverse then, and it slides in perfectly. Absolutely beautiful. When it comes to the main beam saber then, it just attaches into the backpack up on this rotating yellow segment up top. So when it comes to the long range weapons, the first one we have in here is the beam rifle. This is the usual new Gundam style beam rifle, just in matching colors to the suit itself with decals and the works. This pops into the hand into an unusual kind of way. It's not just a PVC finger grip that you usually get with an action figure, but there's also a tab hole in the handle as well for a kind of dual finger and tab grip. This holds in perfectly and looks great in a pose. So the next long range weapon we have in here is the new Hyper Bazooka. Once again, this is exactly like the beam rifle and the mecha itself. That's the same color, same decals, matches perfectly. Getting this into the hand is super simple. It just pops on in like so. I will mention that the handle does have a slot in it, just like the beam rifle. So this is a bit of a kind of dual grip. It grabs with its fingers and with that slot in its hand. So it does hold on quite well. And there is what it looks like in a pose. So when it comes to the storage of the long range weapons, the new Hyper Bazooka can be stored by flipping out this tab on top and that slots into this slot right here in the backpack just like so, nice and tight and it's not going to go anywhere. The beam rifle is pretty much the same, we've got this slide down segment on the butt flap which reveals this hard point right here, flip out segment once again and you just pop the beam rifle in there, once again holds on perfect. Both of these can be stored around back at exactly the same time. So when it comes to the next piece of equipment we have in here, that is the shield. This looks pretty damn good, it's big, it's awesome, we've got decals on this as well, and the way the pearlescent paint is working on this actually reflects the light really well. 
I'm not sure if it's just because it's a big old flat sheet, kind of like the bonnet of a car or something like that, but it really does work here. As for what this looks like, it is very nicely detailed. We've got some plastic coming in from underneath, giving you a nice multi-tiered surface. When you flip it around to the back, we've got the weapons down at the bottom. And when it comes to the attachment point, this can rotate as well as slide up and down. Attaching it is super simple. It just clips onto the back of the arm like this perfectly. And that is what it looks like in a pose. Looking damn awesome. So yeah, pretty much all the equipment we would have seen up to this point is all the standard new Gundam's equipment, not necessarily the Foku Oka version. So what is pretty cool in here is that we do actually have a couple of attachment points for adding onto the stand, which you can actually attach all the excess weaponry onto for when the main event is attached on. And speaking of the main event, let's check it out. So this right here is the main event. This is the long range fin funnel, which is the signature weapon of the Fukuoka version of the new Gundam. Now, strangely enough, this itself is better quality than the actual mech itself. It doesn't have any metal parts, it's all made out of plastic, but the actual detailing, the paintwork and everything on this is sheer perfection. Almost makes me think that the new Gundam body was an old Chogukin that they never released. And this is a brand new engineered for 2022 or 2021, whenever this came out weapon. I mean like the molding, the painting, everything is superior to what we've seen on the actual mecha, which is strange. I'll also mention at this point there's this really cool feature I've never seen in a Gundam model kit or Gundam figure before, and that is when you raise the arm up, sometimes the shoulder will move back on you on a Gundam figure. Usually you can rearrange the shoulder a little bit, but on this, when you actually bring the shoulder forward, it overlaps the front of the armor of the shoulder, so it's got this kind of like recessing mechanism I have never seen before. That is slick, and that looks really cool. Anyway, getting this attached to the arm is quite simple. We've got an adapter for attaching onto the underside of the long range fin funnel. Just pop this little segment on the side of the arm and you can attach it on just like so. This thing, if I can say any one great thing about this, it's rock solid, so heavy, rock solid. This will not drop this weapon, even though this weapon is super, 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 well, long and heavy, it has all the power it needs to hold it up and all the center of gravity that it will never fall over. This thing is literally, well, made of metal on the inside. So if that wasn't cool enough already, this isn't even what this thing looks like firing. So in order to actually get this into its firing mode, you actually have to transform some parts that all move seamlessly. We've got these little fins on the side like so. We also have a sliding rail down bottom with a little locking mechanism. And I suppose it's about time to actually get this up on the new Gundam's back. In order to do that, you just attach it to this arm on the backpack, which you actually fold out by spinning it out like this to get it into the position, this locks in perfectly. When you have this up here, or when you have it anywhere, if you pull up on this blue segment here at the back of it, the whole front opens up automatically on a mechanism. This is so, so cool. The coolest thing about this figure by far. So yeah, pull up the blue bit, the yellow fin on the back moves up and the whole front opens up like this. We also have an absolutely massive effect part, which is definitely vigorous, completely vigorous which plugs into the end like so, so right here is what it looks like firing, and this is one hell of a display. I will mention the joint holding the gun up is not strong enough to actually hold this entire display up like so. I will mention the mecha itself is well heavy enough to actually support it, but we do have an included transparent arm in here you can actually use to hold the whole thing up, which can plug into various places on the action base. So the thing is, accidents do happen, and thankfully, Bandai to machinations have you covered as usual with an extra V-fin in here. This is always good, this is the most likely part to break, and time and time again I say it, Gunpla or Gundam model kits really need to include an extra one of these or two, because these are always what breaks, so this is cool that they did include one. So finally now into the articulation, and as for a comment on the build right here, the one thing I can say about this is it's a literal big old metal brick. This doesn't move at all, to the point that sometimes it's actually a little bit difficult to actually move the parts around, but it does work out pretty awesomely in the end, when it does come to the actual, like, holding of a pose, that is. One thing that is a little strange is we've got these kind of ratchet joints in the knees right here. I click a little bit, see if I can get that sound. And these are probably the weakest aspect, because these seem like they're you know, you think the ratchet would stop them moving back, but it seems like the ratchet actually does this and just allows it to fall right back. And it's actually harder to pull back into position. So the ratchet actually makes them go back easy, pull this way, not so easy, strange. But having mentioned that, I will mention it has never actually fallen over on me, not once. 
And that does make sense because all of its weight will be going forward with this weapon. So yeah, that makes sense. So when it comes to the actual articulation on this, it is rock solid and stiff to a degree with, well, it's kind of a reassuring level of stiffness because this is one rock solid frame we've got here. Now throwing this into the usual pose that I do to test all the articulation at once, this is quite good, but at the same time does fail in some areas. For example, the ankles could pivot in and out a little bit better. There's absolutely nothing at the waist and torso. So there is no rotation, just a teeny little bit, and there is no ab crunch per se. So that does mean this is a heavy limiting factor when it comes to this figure. So everything else works out well, the arms and the legs, but the torso is quite paralyzed. Even towards the waist unit, it is a little bit awkward too. So if you try to get this into even a basic pose, like a crouching pose like this, it's still somewhat weird. It's a little tilted off to the side and a little restricted. So the hips could be a little bit better too. And the skirting armor can get in the way a little bit, but you can pull the crouch off in the end. It just does look a little bit awkward for some angles, but you'll get a basic one. One thing I did notice is we've got some really nice shoulders in here with a lot of articulation, so you can almost bring the arms completely out in front of the body into an almost crossed arm pose, which made me want to get a little bit of kind of God Gundam flair going here. Sadly though, once again, we are restricted at the waist. You cannot bring the legs in towards each other, as in put one behind the other in that kind of almost, well, God Gundam kind of pose. So we can get an almost arm cross, or should I say an almost crossed arm pose, but you can't get the legs together to make it natural. Once again, it does work out well, it just doesn't flow too well. But yeah, even after throwing it into a couple of other poses, this is still quite dynamic with some nice articulation and some extra moving parts like flaps and whatnot. However, it is heavily limited once again at the torso. So no ab crunch, no rotation, which will limit most poses, but not all poses. And you can still make this look absolutely phenomenal. But I warn you, there is one issue, a big, big, big issue with this particular figure. The blue paint transfers. Now, I've never seen transfer this bad in an action figure before. It's getting all over the head, around the back. Any white that will rub up against the blue parts on this, you will get pain transfer, so be careful. So anyway, that right there is it for the review. And sure, this is a mixed bag of a figure, but in the end, I still think it is absolutely fantastic. Now, I'm just going to get the cons out of the way pretty quickly. The LEDs are next to pointless because they're so weak, and the painted eyes with the light bleed doesn't look good. The aesthetics on this, when it comes to the negative aspects, I'm not sure if it's the mold and the plastic parts on the robot, or if the paint is applied too thick, but it does look not so sharp, which is a little bit of a letdown on a premium figure. And I do believe it's the mold on the plastic parts, not the paint, because the long range fin funnel looks sharp, perfect, and the paint is exquisite. Also, there is some limitation to some of the articulation as well, especially around the torso, which could be a little bit better, but no deal breaker. However, when it does come to the positive parts, when it comes to the aesthetics on the whole, this does look fantastic, especially when it's loaded up with all the weapons and that fin funnel and the effect part, this looks explosive, dynamic, and awesome. The metallic blue in here, although it does transfer a little bit, so be careful, does look phenomenal. It's in two shades, just like the white is. So the overall aesthetic is nice. Finally, then it does come with an absolute armory and you can display all of it all at once on that stand, which is pretty cool. And the definite winner in here is that long range fin funnel. That is so, so cool. So at the end of the day, even though there are some issues, it still is a winner in my opinion. Anyway, if you do want one of your own, you can probably, I'm not sure if you can still get it at the Fukuoka Gundam base or not, but that's where it came from. And if you can't get there, like I can't get there, well, you can get yours where I got mine, which is through Bai. link in the description. As always, thank you so, so much for watching. Make sure to come back for more Gundam-related reviews, and I'll see you next time. As always, this video and every video would not be possible without each and every one of you guys who watches my videos. And special thanks to those of you who are supporting me over on Patreon and on the channel members including Caleb Engelhart, Global Frequency Studios, Go Little Rockstar, Gunpla UK Limited, Joe, Kill Me Inc, Lauren Seahack, RG59061, and Van Fon.